Okay, in this video we're going to install the Mumps interpreter. What you're looking at is Linux Mint 17.3 running in Oracle VirtualBox. This it uses the Mate uh, interface, uh, Mate, Mate desktop environment. There are other desktop environments, but I prefer Mate. <coughs> if you look across the bottom here, I've installed um, Firefox. I also have a terminal command line interpreter. And we see the uh, typical things of, of Mate down here. If on yours, if you install it this way, you will find uh, some of these things in other locations. Um, for example, the internet here is, is located here and uh, system tools is where you'll find terminal. If you want to pin them to the launch bar, click, right click on it and it will give you the option to do that. But I've already done that. This is a fully updated version of Mint. Uh, you want to be fully updated because uh, otherwise some of the repositories may be wrong. All right, what we need to do first is get a copy of the distribution. For that purpose, uh, we open up a browser, and it's just did some updates, so it's checking compatibility, and it uh, comes up in the default Mint page. So I type in www.cs.uni.edu slash squiggle ocane. This takes you to my web page. And there you see the web page about mumps and some other things. First of all, there's a link to the book, which is uh, available for purchase, hint. Uh, there's the mumps language user's guide. I'll click on that because we'll need it. It opens a PDF. You can save that if you want. It's also in the distribution, so it's not hard to find. There's a quick tutorial. And there is the actual um, distribution itself. It's a compressed tar file of source code. And the number here, um, it's presently 17.2. When you do it, it may be something higher. So I click on it, and the download should start fairly quickly. Um, it's running the download. I'll bring up the show all downloads here. You can see where it's going. It's going into downloads. Your, you may have set your system up so it goes someplace else. And it's nearly finished. <coughs> I'm on a slow connection. All right, then I open it up in its directory. There it is. How do you decompress it? Well, if you're in Linux, you can just right click and say extract here. And it's extracting it. And there you see the directory that it created. And if you go down to the directory, you'll see there's loads of source files and subdirectories and so forth. Mostly source files. There's a couple of um, object files that are used in the Windows version. I'm not even sure if they're used anymore, but they are there. The um, README file here, this is the one with all of the instructions on how to uh, build the system, is in README.pdf, and the actual source file is uh, for OpenOffice is README.odt. Otherwise, you'll see a bunch of C files, C++ files, configuration files, the .in, um, what else? Um, you know, script files. There are a lot of script files in here. These are used to build the system. What we need to do is get into this directory. I need a terminal open in the directory, so I right click and I say open in terminal, and bingo, there it is. Uh, so I am in this terminal, this directory, and you can see there's the code. I will need to be super user in order to install the code, so that's uh, su do su. Uh, and now I'm super user. I'm supposed to do sudo S, su do in every line. I don't. All right, back to the uh, PDF that we downloaded. You go to about, I think it's page 14 or so, 13, 14. I haven't overshot it here. Um, the, which will give us the scripts. There's a lot of information up here that you may or may not want to uh, read. When you install it, there are several different options for the database, and you're seeing some of them here. Um, just scroll by. There are several packages that need to be installed for the system to run. Some of these are probably already installed in your system. Some of them are not. For example, we need the um, Perl compatible regular expression library. It's probably not installed. Autoconf probably is installed. Uh, Readline is probably installed, not the development ver version, though. 
Um, anyway, uh, C++ compiler, known as G++ in Linux, probably not installed. These are the apt-get instructions in order to do it. However, there are script files that will allow you to do it. There's also the question of how you're going to store the database. You can store the database into a native B tree that is part of the original package. And there's two forms of that. There's the standalone version and there's the client server version. We're going to do the standalone. It's the simplest and the quickest. You can also install the system so that the database, the mumps global arrays, go into a server, uh, PostgreSQL or MySQL. I prefer PostgreSQL, but they're both available. There's also instructions on how to make this run under Windows. If you do, you need certain SIGWIN DLL files in order to make it run. Now, there are a bunch of script files that uh, are used to install it. This is the one, the client server native B tree. And then down here is the standalone version. Now, in most of these, there are two script files. The first one actually checks to see if you have all the software, and if you don't, it installs it. And then it calls the second. The second one actually configures and compiles and installs mumps. If you already have all of the software installed, you don't use the first one. You simply use the second one if you want to recompile mumps. Um, but in our case here, we'll be using the first one, which is native configure.script. All right, take this down and go over here. Uh, native, don't forget to type dot slash um, native configure.script. And this will take a while as it um, checks everything, downloads things, installs things. The amount of time it takes will depend upon what your system already has on it. Some of these are large and they take a while to download. They mainly come from the Ubuntu uh, repositories when you're running Mint. See, while it's doing it, is there anything else I can uh, get into here? Uh, like I said, there is some documentation, some other information here. Uh, nothing I guess we need to look at right now. I'll take that down. This is taking longer than usual, but that's a question of the speed of the interface. It's springing down the um, C compiler right now. GCC is the C compiler, G++ is the C++ compiler. And there's the configuration. This is the second uh, file, script file running. And it's configuring and checking to see if you have everything. And if everything passed, it would have died right here if something was missing. If something's missing, then you have to go back in and manually install it. Uh, these are the compiles. These are comp uh, C++ compiles, and this is a link edit taking place. And it does it twice because it's building both a client and a server, a read-only version, excuse me, and a um, read-write version. There are two of them. The read-only version, you can have multiple versions of it running simultaneously on the same database, whereas the read-write requires exclusive access to the database. That's in the process of changing. All right. Uh, now, when you're using, of course, the... Um, client server database or any of the relational database systems, uh, everything is uh, completely read-write. All right, it looks like it completed. I will exit out of uh, super user mode, and now I'm just a regular user. And uh, you can now test to see if it works. Um, let's go up a bit here and let's do a, uh, a test directory and not be cluttering up the source directory. Um, so now I'm in a directory. You can see I'm under download slash test. And um, from here, I can um, leave things that uh, won't mess up the actual source distribution. So how do, you, how do you make it work? Well, you simply type mumps. And there it is, up and running. Now, if you just type the name of the interpreter, it comes up in a command prompt mode. Um, notice that it says to exit, you type halt. You can type H, capital H, small h, any number of letters that work up to the word halt and that'll get you out. All right, so is it actually working? Well, let's try it. 
set i equal to 1 plus 2, write, no, I'll just, all right, write i. 3, bingo, it seems to be working. Uh, there are a lot of things we can do, but we'll try them in the next video. Um, the database. This is the standalone database. It will go in the current directory. It's the fastest. It's also um, the one that uh, is, is the least flexible in that regard. So if I want to create a global array, which is a database op operation, um, uh, whoops, equals one, two, three, uh, type that. And uh, if I were to want to write that back, you'll get the one, two, three. Uh, the that is actually was the database operation. By the way, you can go to previous commands. I'm hitting the up arrow. You can go to previous commands and execute them um, by hitting the up arrow or the down arrow as, as, as needed. All right, we're done there. I'll type my halt and I'll do an ls in the directory. Look, there's something appeared. Um, ls-lh shows you the long form of the directory listing and you'll notice there are two files that magically appeared. One is data.dat and the other is key.dat. In the native database, uh, key.dat is the actual B tree where the global array references are stored, and data.dat is where the values in the B tree are stored. So it's actually broken into two different files. But those files contain the data. You don't want to delete them. Well, if you delete them, you lose your database. Sometimes you want to completely start over, and that's how you do it. So now we have mumps up and running or available to be running, and we will move on to another video.